Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, hopefully you saw the email, Daniel. I apologize for uh, the confusion. I had, uh, you know, updated the due date of the homework on the actual paper and then in the PowerPoint notes, but I forgot to make uh, the update in the Moodle on that Moodle assignment part. So it's not actually due until next week. And as I think you guessed, the reason that you couldn't hand it in is that the cutoff date was, you know, last year still. So, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> So we will be working on the um, the re the pretty much yeah the rest of that homework uh, today and maybe a little bit on um, uh, next week as well and then it will be due on uh, next Thursday. All right. Is everyone having a good first week of class? Can actually, I think you might be muted still, Cade. Or is it... uh, yeah, it's been a pretty good week, I think. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Are uh, several of you are seniors, right? Are the rest of you juniors, maybe half juniors, half seniors. Yeah, I'm a senior. Yeah, this class can kind of be taken either place, probably depending on, you know, just whether you had time in your schedule or wanted to take it sooner or later. <clears throat> so, yeah, all right. Well, let's uh, about a minute or two after eight. So let's get started. <clears throat> All right. So um, let's go back <clears throat> to the PowerPoint I was doing. I'm going to run through it real quickly. I think prob um, we probably won't do the activities on it, but I just wanted to point out a few things kind of finish up that last regular lecture before we go into the, the flipped classroom stuff. So um, like we discussed on Tuesday, in this course, we're going to cover, we're going to review a bunch of stuff about vectors uh, and vector calculus. And the reason for that is that uh, electromagnetics deals with uh, vectors a lot. And so, um, because it has so many vectors and we're dealing with it and we're dealing with these fields and what we're going to see soon is that um, when we get into the electrostatics right dealing with the fields we're going to want to do the, the vector calculus basically we just want to review everything right you know it's been for some of you if you're a senior right it may it may be uh, three four years already since you took calculus three right so um, you know this may not be information that you remember exactly. Did you, how long ago was it for you, Kate? How long ago did you take Victory Calculus? Um, like three or four semesters ago. Yeah, so a pretty long time ago, right? You probably don't just remember everything about it immediately. And I, I you know, I don't expect you, uh, any of you to. So we're, we're gonna, we wanna review all of it. I know you probably, some of these things are so basic, right? doing parallelogram rule. These, there's multiple ways you can think about adding up vectors. You can do think of it this parallelogram way or the head to tail, tip to tail. Uh, so <clears throat> that's how you add them up. Yes, you, you can also, vectors have this commutative property where you can add uh, A plus B or B plus A and you'll get the same result in that vector field space. Another important distinction to make is that we can have uh, equal vectors, uh, which have the same magnitude and direction. 
So just let me go back. All right, so those equal vectors. <clears throat> When you have an equal vector, right? If you have a 3D space, you could have a vector um, here, right? It has this magnitude and direction and that same vector could be repeated here with the same magnitude and direction. And we would call those equal, but identical vectors in addition to, to having the same magnitude and direction also have the same origin. Okay, so this is one important uh, point that you can also have different origins on a vector. If they have different origins, but the same magnitude and direction, we'd call it equal. But if they have the same origin, magnitude, and direction, then they're identical. Uh, position and distance vectors. If we have uh, two different vectors, like R1 and R2, both coming out of the origin, uh, then we can define the points that they go to, right? So these, these vectors uh, go from the origin uh, to point P1 or P2. And so we can write uh, an expression for R1, um, the vector R1 or the vector R2. And we can do that by uh, subtracting the point that they go to minus the origin. So in this case, Right, for R1, it's, it's very simple. We just take the point P1 at X in the X and, um, and the origin and subtract it. So if you're trying to determine, you have a vector that starts at the origin and ends at some point, and you know the coordinates of the point that it ends at, we can compute a vector using this information. And so, um, if it starts at the origin, it's quite simple, right? We're just going to be subtracting the point. So X1, Y1, Z1, <clears throat> X1, Y1, Z1 to get this vector R1. And so this describes a vector that goes from the origin to point P1, where P1 has the X1, Y1, Z1 coordinates. And likewise, right, for vector R2, right, this would be in the x direction, x2, in the y direction, y2, and the z direction, z2. <clears throat> Another related topic is what if you had a vector that goes, that points from the end of one vector to the end of another vector, like this? which happens sometimes, this is a useful thing that we occasionally want to compute. And so in this case, we can write this vector um, by taking the origin minus the, the point that it ends up with and uh, arrive at this vector R1, 2. So R uh, from one to two. And this would be a distance vector between two points. All right, now uh, take a moment and think about this if you haven't in a while. Do you remember what the difference between a vector and a scalar is? Vectors have magnitude and direction and scalar. Scalar does not, is that what you said? Or did you have Yes. A, okay. Can you, what about uh, another good way to think about this is what, what is a, what's something that is a vector quantity that you might typically deal with? And what's something that's a scalar quantity that you might typically deal with? Um, vector would be um, acceleration. Sure. <clears throat> And scalar would just be meters. Meters, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, so those are those are good, uh, great examples. Um, some other vector examples, yeah, it would be uh, in addition to acceleration, like right, velocity might have a, a is a vector. Um, 
And then another scalar quantity that you probably have dealt with uh, frequently would be uh, temperature, right? So temperature is another scalar quantity. So this will come in important later in this, this course because we will also be dealing with vector fields and scalar fields, right? So um, in addition to having just one vector or one scalar, we could make an entire function. So these are like the functions that you might have <clears throat> worked on in calc, calc 3, where the function uh, takes multiple, maybe multiple inputs and describes a whole field of vectors or possibly, you know, a, a scalar field would be something like, what is the temperature at every single point inside of the room that you're sitting in? That, that could be an example of a scalar field, right? You could, you could find the, the temperature at each point in that room and that would be a scalar field. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. Uh, then we have um, the dot product um, as well, which is a scalar product. Sometimes you hear this called as scalar products or inner product, um, but this is a operation on vectors that results in a scalar. And this is in, um, and the dot product has the commutative and distributive properties. So this, the dot product um, follows these, these rules when you are using it. All right. Now that's in contrast to the cross product, which operates again on, on two vectors. Um, but uh, does not create a scalar product. This creates a vector product. So the result of the cross product is a vector perpendicular to the plane that's created by the vector A and B, right? And so you probably remember using the right-hand rule, right, in your, in your classes. So, uh, you know, you, you can think of the cross product, right? That will generate, if you take the cross between two vectors, you will get the third vector, which is perpendicular um, or normal to the, the surface of that plane that's created by those two vectors that you're using in the cross product, A and B. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the normal unit vector, N, or the unit normal vector, all right, this is, so we spoke last Tuesday about unit vectors, right? Those have a, a magnitude of one. Um, they don't have to be in the X, Y, Z direction, um, right? So, but, but these ones, right, we will often use this terminology, N hat, for a vector that is normal to two other vectors. <clears throat> so this, uh, will be used throughout the book to indicate that a uh, vector is normal to a surface. All right. The cross product, because it the product of the this is a, a vector, it does follow some different rules, right? And so this one is anti-commutative. So um, A cross B is equal to minus B cross A. So this is it's it's not quite the same. You can't just say it's equal to B cross A. And then it, um, it is, however, uh, distributive. All right. Uh, there are, this is an example of how to do the determinant. There's also many videos available for this. But one way to do it is, you know, choose a row uh, and then start with the first point on the row and take the, um, the, the determinant of the smaller part of the, of the vector. So if you have a three by three, choose a row, take the determinant of one part, multiply it by the first part of the row, and then add using this matrix, um, add a positive or negative sign. So the first one, if we choose the first row, choose the first part of the first row, we'll take the determinant of here, uh, the coefficient of two is positive, when we go to the next part, right, we take the second part of the row that we chose, take the determinant of the, the bottom part, add in this coefficient here. Oops. And then on the last one, 
I think I might be missing the slide, but we go to the last one, two, take the determinant of this minus this, uh, add in the coefficient, which would be the positive sign, and then you can add them all up, get one single number, and that's your determinant for a three by three. All right, so let's, let's not go through there. Okay, fish fields, got a field. All right, let's let's move on to the the homework now, because so, this problem is in the homework. Do any of you have any any questions about vectors? I'm sure this is you've all seen this before, probably in two to three classes now. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see. What about uh, AK? How how are you doing on on the vectors? I'm good. Yeah, but uh, AK, are you there? Yeah. Are uh, you there? Oh, there. Yeah, there's another student named AK Almighty. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I can call you AK also if you want, but. All right, AK Almaty, I'm assuming you are not with us today. How about you, Gabrielle? How are you? How are you doing on this? Good. All right, cool. All right. <clears throat> so <clears throat> let's go on. Let's uh, discard these annotations. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to point out. Yeah, so many of these operations I do have in uh, as a, a handout. If, if we were doing this class in person, I would give this to you as a handout. Now, the um, because it's not in person, it is not a handout, but there's two. Uh, so throughout this course, when we're working on, on problems, I have uh, these helpful, like cheat sheets that I call cookbooks, right? They're basically some like, you know, if you have a recipe, right, that helps you follow a process to arrive at a, a chosen result, right? So this is a, a basically a, a process driven method. And so I have these things I call cookbooks. So it's, it's like a, a process or something that can help you with the process of um, getting a correct answer. So if you have a printer at your house um, or you're on campus sometime, I highly recommend that you print out all of these cookbooks from this section because um, these are like the cheat sheets and I'll let you take these into the examination. <clears throat> um, but they're also just very helpful, right? And so this shows you um, how to uh, set up or compute a lot of the different things that we just spoke about in terms of vectors, right? So <clears throat> This shows us, you know, vector representation, how to find the magnitude, how to find a position vector, what the base vectors are, dot product, all kinds of things. Um, the transformation relationship between these. And this shows this for Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical. So throughout this course, we will be looking at problems in all three of these coordinate systems. <clears throat> so in electromagnetics, as you, you might remember this from your uh, physics course, right? But sometimes it's very convenient to deal with spherical, the spherical coordinate system. And that's because, right, if you have a single point charge and we want to know what is, the, um, what is the vector field related to that point charge, what's the E field related to that point charge, it's, it's most convenient to express it uh, in, the, in the spherical coordinates. Right. But in our normal life, right, we don't, it's hard for us, like my head, I don't think about the world and spherical coordinates that often. It's usually in Cartesian coordinates. So we'll often be converting between, you know, spherical and Cartesian in this class. And then, of course, in between there, there's some cases, right, where it may be useful to simplify a problem to the cylindrical system or Perhaps in the case of a coaxial cable, you know, this is a, a cable or some kind of uh, pipe or charge carrying rod. These these are off. These types of problems are often expressed in cylindrical coordinates. So we'll we'll be moving back and forth between them. This cookbook will be a good friend for you to to uh, help you 
do that and you'll be able to bring it to to the exam to help whenever you need um, and likewise uh, this uh, calculus cookbook has um, a few very useful relationships as well showing you how to um, <clears throat> take the uh, uh, cross product um, and the divergence uh, and the gradient and the Laplacian in, in these different coordinate systems. So if you have a uh, if you're on campus, take a moment, uh, print these out. It will probably be useful to have them as a as a reference for you. Um, and um, yeah, so yeah, I'd, I'd recommend doing that. All right, so let's go on to the homework. I think most of you have printed this out, and I know some of you, uh, I apologize, have actually finished it already because you thought it was due uh, to, uh, today or tomorrow. Um, so it's actually due next week, but, um, <clears throat> find the homework and I don't, let's, let's choose some problems to start working through. So this, this will be, um, you know, your, your chance to help drive the class and we can work together to choose which, which problems are the most difficult or the most, um, interesting ones that you would like to solve. So. Who has a, pro a problem that they would like to, to work on? So we look at problem two. Problem three? Or uh, uh, problem two, sorry. Sorry, I've got some, some reason I'm having trouble understanding. Oh, uh, problem two. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's look at problem two. Did you do, let's, yeah, let's look at problem two. Let's start with uh, A or B and then go on uh, from, from there. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> on problem two, let me pull that in. All right, so this problem, right, it says um, when sketching or demonstra demonstrating the spatial variation of a vector field, we often use arrows, as in this figure, where the length of the arrow is made to be proportional to the strength of the field, and the direction of the arrow is the same as that of the fields. So this sketch that's shown in figure 3.2 represents the vector field, and it consists of arrows pointing radially away from the origin and their lengths increasing linearly in proportion to their distance away from the origin. So using this arrow representation, we can make a sketch of the vector fields. And this example one is a sketch of the vector field E in a um, polar vector field. And so the closer, so the, the vector field E, in this case, in this example, is the vector field E, it's in the R hat direction, and the magnitude is R. So when we're close to the origin, right, so right, this is R is in, right, if you go in this direction, right, this is R. So the further out you go, the larger R gets. So if we're close to the origin, right, R will be small, but the further out we go, it will be a bigger. <clears throat> so in this case, they've shown us in the example how to draw this vector field, where the closer we are to the origin, right, we have a smaller vector field, but the further away we go, right, it gets larger and larger. And they just chose a few points, a few points and a few directions to choose in order to help, in order to give a, just a complete or general understanding of what the vector field looks like. Okay, so. <clears throat> All 
This being the case, <clears throat> let's look at this E1. So take a minute on your paper, if you haven't already, and think about what this field E1 will look like. So if, if we're at E1, right, set up a coordinate system, x, y, and we see that the E1, right, it only has the vector field in the x direction, and it's at the y magnitude. So let's maybe um, try on your paper, right, making a few, choose a few points like these ones. <clears throat> and drawing what would what would the vector what what would the vector look like at each one of those points okay so try that on your own piece of paper and are you still seeing the work that i I, I drew or what what is your screen show? Okay, perfect. Okay, so if we have x, x hat is in this direction. So if we want to choose, let's draw these vectors now. So if x hat is in this direction, <clears throat> which direction will, for, if we started to draw the vector from this point, will it be going this way or will it go this way? One or two, which direction will it be pointed? one yeah it will be pointed in one right because we're the y is positive but then we have this negative sign okay so just draw it like this <clears throat> then if we go further up will this be will the magnitude here be larger or smaller than this one larger yeah larger okay so now we have possibly something that looks like this. Now, what about when we go down to here, which direction will this vector be pointing? And um, coming back to here, will it be in direction one or direction two? Uh, let's see. What do you, AK, are you with us? What do you think? What direction will it be pointed in? Two. Two, okay. And that was, Daniel, did you answer that? Or is that AK? No, that's Daniel. Sorry, um, they call me AK. Okay. okay. All right. Um, I'll, yeah, Abdullah, 
what direction? All right, probably still not with us. Uh, Gabriel, which direction should we be pointing at? One or two? We're at this point right here. Yeah, so now that we've gone down here, right, y is a negative number. So uh, the negative, so if this is negative and this is negative, right, turns out our vector will be this way, and this one will be even larger. So if we wanted to, right, we could complete, similar to this one, we could draw many points, right? So each one of these, well, maybe this isn't obvious. If I drew it here, Will this be the same magnitude? If I drew a vector for this field at this point, will it be the same magnitude as this one? I would say yes. Yeah, so, okay. So if we look at this point, right, we can see that our vector field is uh, in the X hat direction and the magnitude is determined by the value of y. So if we choose these points, is so if this is if is this y equal to this y, like the direction um, on that we've traveled up the y-axis, is it equal here and here? Yes. Yeah, it's equal here and here. So therefore, should the magnitude be the same? Yeah. So we can feel a little more confident saying that now, right? It should be the same. And we can see that because the magnitude we've traveled is the same. And so that will that will follow for every point all along here. So you could draw this, you know, as much as you wanted, right? You could you could go even further up. But the idea is once you've done, you know, 10 points of these or so, right? You should be able to get a pretty good general sense of what the, the field looks like. So in electromagnetics or when you're dealing with electromagnetics, so much of it uh, relates to this, these fields that we're dealing with. And because we're dealing with these fields over and over, uh, it's useful to take a moment and, and practice uh, thinking about visualizing these fields. How do these fields look? Of course, this gets even more difficult if you go into three dimensions, but the two dimensions is, is quite a bit easier to do. So um, let's, let's look at, um, let's do something else. So let's, let's now go all the way down to C. Okay, so hopefully you have the homework uh, pulled up uh, somewhere um, already. Let's go to the oops, oh, circle this one. Let's look at, at C, okay? And I will break you into um, groups, okay? So I'll put you into breakout rooms, which is something I'll be doing uh, throughout this class. And so this will this will basically be two, two rooms of two people. Um, you'll be randomly assigned. I'll go, you'll work with the other person to figure it out and I'll go to each of the, I'll visit each of the breakout rooms to um, uh, speak with you in, in a smaller, even smaller group setting. So I'll create these. Okay, I'm gonna open all the rooms. <clears throat> oh. And um, send you into them. All right, <clears throat> so all, I think all you need to do is hit join. <clears throat> Mario, are you with us today? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a little late. I had yeah. a little bit of a Wi-Fi issue. Uh, no worries. All right, I'm gonna sign you to room two. So I, all you need to do is just click join, and when you get in the room, um, I think Gabriel should be able to help you out. So. All right. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll probably be in there just a moment too to uh, we'll, we're working on some problems and I'll I'll go back and forth. AK, you with us?
AK, are you still there? All right. AK, Abdullah, I'm removing you from the meeting. I, you have not joined us today or on Tuesday. So this will likely also result with you being um, administratively dropped from the course. All right, how are you guys doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, did Gabriel explain what's going on or what we're working on? Uh, nope, <laughs> did okay. not. Gabriel, are you, you still with us? Yeah. Yeah, so um, what we're working on is we're on uh, working on homework one right now. So we're working on problem two, and we're working on um, part C of that. So what that is, is this vector field that we've created, uh, or that we were given an example of how to draw a vector field in two dimensions. And we're doing it using this arrow representation. Um, and so we just went through part A, where we uh, drew the arrow representation for this vector field. All right, so the vector field E1, the, the direction of each vector in this field will be in the x direction, and the magnitude and direction will be determined by this minus uh, y. Okay, so we chose a few five points along this axis. And we drew the relative vector field. It doesn't have to be exact. We're just trying to draw a representation so we get an idea of what it looks like. So meaning we can tell, right, the further we go up the y-axis, the bigger the number y will be. Therefore, this vector should be relatively larger than this vector. And then when we're below the y-axis, uh, we get this because of this negative sign, the, the field direction switches. And the more the, the larger the magnitude of in y, so the, the, the further down you go in that y axis, right, the bigger it will be. So now um, you are going to work, you and Gabriel will work together to think about how to draw this vector field. Okay, so, um, so if you have a piece of paper, try get get that out, try drawing, drawing it, work together to see what you think it means. I think um, if if you uh, you know can, um, I recommend turning your cameras on, especially when we're in these smaller breakout rooms, so that you can um, you know see each other, or like even you know if you need to hold hold some work up up to the camera, um, which might be possibly faster than um, you know drawing it. You you also may, perhaps you uh, know this, but. Uh, there's another way too. So if you go to while we're in here, you can go to new share. Do you see that on the um, the screen? Uh, it would be like this green button, and you can choose that new share, and that will you know let you choose from things on your um, on your desktop, but including a whiteboard, which Zoom automatically comes with. So you can you know. It's a little tricky, but you can, you know, draw whatever you feel like here and on this whiteboard, which might be helpful uh, as well when you're if you're working through the problems together. So, okay. So I just wanted to mention that, give you some ideas of the tools that are available to us that we'll be working on. So, thanks for, uh, yeah, to turn on your camera, Mario, and and joining us. I know sometimes, right. Sometimes it's just not possible if your Wi-Fi is down or whatever. You know the, you know it is possibly better to have the that camera off. So, 
I do under understand. Um, okay. Do you have a good idea of how to work work right. this problem a little bit? Um, yeah, I think I have a general idea. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let let me stick or stick with you for a few more minutes then, since you just joined us. So what what we'll do, right? I'll uh, I'll draw this axis. Hi, Gabriel. Nice to see you. Um, I'll draw this axis here, and um, on on this axis, right? We're trying to find so the the vector is x x. Okay. Oops. <clears throat> And y hat y. So I'll we'll choose. Let's just choose a few points, a few random points to find to to to, to draw what the vector field will be. <clears throat> okay, and then also let's let's recall right. This is x, and this is y. Okay, so at this point, right here, the x, we, we see that the, the vector field that we draw would be in the x direction, x amount, and in the y direction, y amount. Okay, so this is generally, right from here to here, this is some x, and this is some y. And you know, this is not precise, but it looks like x is equal to y and vice versa, right? Does that look about right to you approximately? Yeah. Okay. So we could say then that in the that this is in the x amount right here. So this is x x hat. And then in the y direction, this is y y hat and if we combine these the general shape of this would be like this right this is what the vector would look like <clears throat> and we could do that right we could use the parallelogram rule or we could also have drawn this um right the the tip to tail method right so the so this if we chose to draw a vec the vector field representation at this point, it will look like this. All right. So then, right here, what is at this point? How far have we gone anywhere in the x direction? What is the value like at this point on the coordinate system? Where are we in the x direction? What? That'd be zero. Yeah, so we have no no vector field at all in the zero direction. What about in the y direction? I mean, it has some form of uh, magnitude, I guess you could call it. Yeah, so it's it's would it be it it'll be the same as he, this point, right? Yeah, it's pointing up, right? Yeah. So then we would just draw it like this. Maybe that's a little bit too high, but. You know, we're just we're just drawing it relatively. We're just getting an idea of what this field looks like. Then, what about in this direction? What will, where where will this point? Where would this the vector field point in this direction? Southwest. South southwest. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. All right. So southwest would be no south east northwest. Northwest. There you go. Now, now we're talking. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So it'd be in this direction. All right. So I'll I'll let you guys go now. Finish this up, but um, just choose a few more points. And I also recommend after I leave, thinking about what about this point? What will if you go even further out? Far bigger in x and bigger in y, what will happen to the vector field the further away you go from the origin? So I'll let you work on, on that. I'm going to go over to the other breakout room, work with them for a minute. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. How, how are you guys doing? 
uh, we're able to talk about it a little bit, but we don't know if we're right or wrong. Yeah. Do you, um, I don't know if you can like hold up the, the picture of the work you've done. Yeah, he, he, he has it. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's a little, I wanted to yeah. show you when you have these um, backgrounds up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like it looks like you got it right. Yeah, that looks that looks correct to me. Um, and then I, I wanted to show you too another helpful thing that you can do when you're in here. So if you look at the bottom, um, um, there's this share screen. It's it's green. Do you see that on your computer? So if you press that, it'll bring up a whole bunch of windows, of course, um, of, of things on your screen. But there's also one called whiteboard. And if uh -huh. you click on that one, that's built into Zoom. And if you just have a trackpad or something, it's it's not the easiest thing to use, but it does work. And so you can, um, you know, use this to to draw something. So I think what I saw on yours was something that looked like this. Yeah. Be correct. Okay. Perfect. And if you went this way, what, um, like, if I chose this point, which direction would it be pointed? Like northwest. Sorry, go ahead. Point towards the same ones to the right of it. Yeah. So in this, all right. So is this on this side of the axis? If we have an X, is it going to be positive or negative? Negative. Yeah. So let's let's draw that right here. Let's say this this is X, X. And what about the Y? Positive or negative? Negative. Okay. So we're above the we're right here. So is this is this Y positive? Like if we're going up this axis. Yes this value of y is positive or negative positive yeah positive okay so it's in this direction so then if we use the parallelogram rule it should go like this i believe do you agree with that disagree what do you think what do you feel i agree okay yeah that's what i'm thinking also so um, what about down here? Which, which, where would this one point generally? South east. Yeah. So south and east. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So I think you all got it. Um, yeah. When we're in the the breakout rooms, you can. There's lots of different ways that you can share. You could even put it into the that shared drive if if you want. But uh, the main idea is that we work on a problem. You know. If, one, maybe two other people, a little bit smaller, so it feels more comfortable to share what you're thinking. I want, you know, this whole class, right, like we're working on things together and they're homework problems. You probably haven't seen it before. Sometimes you just, you're, you know, make the wrong guess or the wrong uh, choice. And so this, you know, these breakout rooms, I want them to be a time where, you know, it's even more comfortable to say, okay, this is what I think it is. And then we work together to figure out, oh, is that correct? Is that not correct? Um, but work on that, work on those problem solving skills together and in, in a place where it's okay to be right or wrong. So that's, that's what I'm hoping you all get out of this. Um, so, okay. All right. I am going to bring us all back to the main room. So, all right, <clears throat> I think they will just join us back into our room here in a moment. This one, I think this problem wasn't particularly hard, but in the, um, yeah, in the future, yeah, maybe even today, let's, let's practice um, taking a photo, uploading it to the drive and, um, and, and looking at it all as a, as a class together. So that will probably be the general route of a lot of the problems. I might work it, depending on how much time we have or how many problems there are, 
like I might work it based on your input on if we have more time, I'll put you in the breakout rooms, you'll work it together and then we'll loop back around um, to everyone joining and taking a look at, um, at your, your work. So, <clears throat> okay. All right. Hi, everybody. So now we're back in the breakout room. I was just speaking with Cade and Daniel. So if someone has a, uh, it finished up the, the work on a piece of paper, if you could upload that to our shared drive. So take a moment, upload it to our shared drive, and then we'll look at, look at the result together now. So I'll give you a second to take a photo, load it onto that shared drive. Just let me know when someone has, uh, has it up there. Um, the work we just did? Yeah, the work that we just did on uh, problem 2C. So once someone has it uploaded, just let me know. I think mine uploaded now. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm seeing that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, so this is Mario's work. And do you all agree that this looks correct? Yeah. yeah, and that's and that's what I think we got in our in the other group, um, Kate and Daniel. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing Mario. That's that's great. Looks good. So that's this is basically how to draw some uh, vector field representations in two dimensions. So we'll we'll be working with vectors a lot in this class. So just being able to think about them and visualize them is something that you'll want to be able to do. All right, so let's let's move on now to another problem. Um, let's see what 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 problems would you guys like to look at next? <clears throat> do you want to do was was I think one I think all the questions on one should have been hopefully very, very much feeling like a review, right? Were these, did these all feel like review simple? I, I, I'm not sure if, if you're a... It was, it was a review for sure, yeah. Okay. All right, so I think these ones should all be review. They might take you a few moments, but it should be things that you've definitely seen before. Uh, the other one, so maybe maybe we should jump over to this this number three. Is that one look look like a good one to work on? We can or four, whatever. What do you what are you guys? What would you prefer? And start there. Yeah, okay. All right. So, <clears throat> number three. Let's 
pass it. Okay. Okay. okay, all right, are you seeing question three where it says use the appropriate expression? Yes. Okay, don't be afraid. Sometimes, you know, I have so many windows and stuff that I'm moving through. So if I'm act, if I'm not showing you the right thing, uh, definitely speak up and just be like, hey, I'm not seeing what I'm not seeing what you think I'm seeing. All right. So use the appropriate expression for differential surface area DS to determine the area of each of the surfaces. So this problem is a surface area problem. Let's start here. We don't need to draw these surfaces, but this right, this is in what coordinate system is this being, is this describing? Cylindrical. Yeah, so this is a cylindrical coordinate system. Uh, if we were to, if we were to draw this, right, you don't have, you don't have to do this for these, but let's, let's take a um, second and draw it anyways <clears throat> um, this is a on a cylinder right so it's in the coordinate system so i'm going to draw a cylinder here it goes from the cylinder has radius here that's three we're looking at a set of angles right from zero to pi thirds so maybe like about out to here let's say and it goes from z equals minus two to z equals two okay so if i were to redraw that right this is probably we could this is some kind of surface it might look something like this right and we want to know what is the area on this surface right so we want to we want to come up with a way of finding the area that's on that surface so <clears throat> when we uh, solve for a uh, surface area we need to set up a integral, right? And it, we're going to integrate over two different surf, uh, two two different directions. So, how can we figure out what this is going to be, right? So, how do we figure out what we should integrate over? So my favorite way is to think about when we're on this surface, if we move around on this surface. So if, if you're somehow standing on the surface and you move around, while you're moving, which things are changing? We have three options. We have R, phi, or Z. So when you move around on this surface, does R change? No. No. Yeah, R does not change, right? We are on that surface no matter where we are, no matter what location we are in, the, the value of R is equal to three. We're on this radius of three, but phi, right? If we move around on this, phi does change, right? If I move this direction, phi is changing. If I move this direction down, right, Z changes. So this, we're on a surface where these ones change. Okay, so that means this will, is going to give us helpful information for determining DS. So I mentioned earlier, and I think maybe before you arrived, Mario, but I have on the uh, course page, I have a bunch of things that I call cookbooks. I recommend that you print these out if possible, because it'll be a handy reference guide and you'll be able to 
uh, take this to the exam. But if we go to this uh, cookbook, I can see here, I have a set of differential surface areas <clears throat> okay, that I can choose from. <clears throat> So these are the possibilities for the cylindrical coordinate system. And these are the differential surface areas that we could use to solve the problem. So I'm, I just put them into the problem we're solving here. Right, so this one, I, I, we've decided, we determined, right, that phi and z change. So it looks like this is the ds that we should choose when we set up this integral. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you a few moments uh, on your own. So see if you can set up an integral that is going to, to solve for this differential, or for this surface area. So try to set up an integral that describes that surface area. <clears throat> All right, does anyone have a integral set up? All right, so, <clears throat> When we're using this cookbook, one thing I do want to point out, right, this cookbook shows the ds uh, as a vector quantity, but we expect this to be a scalar value, right? So when we're choosing this ds, um, 
the one the one thing that you will need to, to recall is that if we're working for a scalar quantity right like the surface area we don't need to include the vector value of this <clears throat> um, so if we want to find the area right this is going to be <clears throat> we could write it like two integrals uh in with the dsr so our area and it should be r phi dz okay so for the limits what should our limits be for what should we integrate over for the fee? Zero to pi. Yeah. So if we should go from zero to pi thirds for this one. And then what about for Z? Negative two to two. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we'll go from negative two to two here. All right. So this is the setup for the integral that you should solve. Did anyone get uh, get a final a final value or a final answer? Or pi. Or yeah. pi. Yep, exactly. So if you work this whole thing, you should get four pi as your result. All right, nice work. Let's see, what else do we have? time for today about 10 more minutes let's see what did does anyone have another problem they would like to work just take a look at one of these volume ones yes volume one would be good yeah all right so <clears throat> a or b on the volume can we do b all right so let's look at b and what coordinate system is this one in very cool yeah and how did how did you tell that it was spherical what 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 was the clue that made you say, I know this is spherical? Um, the variables are and that it has both theta and phi. Yeah, yep. So just if we look at the variables, right? If in cylindrical, it's a little r. In spherical, it's big R. And then spherical also has this theta variable, right? OK. So if we want to solve for a uh, set up a spherical one we can go back to this this vector cookbook okay all right so do a new share okay all right so if we're doing a volume integral we can look through this this set this cookbook right and go down okay see differential length surface area differential volume all right so this one this is what we would use when we're doing volume integrals and then so i went down here and i see the volume and then we said okay this is definitely going to be spherical coordinates right so that means that the integral uh, or the integrand we should use is, is this guy in the corner Oops. so I'll take this and I will paste it in here. I will go back to it. All right. So this is the DV that we have chosen. All right. So if we want to do a volume integral, right? Should look like this. 
So we're going to have three integrals. And then, right, I'm just substituting our dv in, so r squared sine of theta dr d theta d phi. Okay, so what should the limits be for r? <laughs> Zero to five. Yeah, zero to five. And for theta? Zero to five thirds. Yeah. So I chose zero to five by looking here, right? So this is the the volume is defined by these these relationships. So that's how I know that the volume is defined by being from zero to radius of five. For the angle theta, I know it's defined by being zero to pi thirds. So then for phi, right, it's going to be just the same way. I know it's defined by going from zero to two pi. Okay, so this will be the full integral setup that you would use in order to solve for that final volume. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's how you would set that integral up. Okay. And let's see here. Anything else I want to say about this one? I don't think so. We're about out of time. The final answer should be 21 pi over two. So when you're working through this, you know, make sure you do some practice, but this is the result that you should get. So I'll let you finish working on that uh, on your own. Um, I do want to point out a couple other things now that we're close to the end of class, a couple other helpful tips for you all. So on this first page, um, I have, are you seeing the Moodle page right now? Okay, perfect. So uh, I don't know, have any of you ever used Wolfram Alpha, the online? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's good. I think this is something that is very helpful, right? So if you ever want to, you know, you, <clears throat> integral, you, we're going to be doing a lot, lots of integrals. Oops, integral of, let's just do sine of x, right? Let's say you just can't remember what integral of sine of x is, right? You can just type in something like integral of sine of x, and it is going to give you an answer. So you can use this for simple problems, and you can use that all the way up to more complex problems. And you can even do things, right, like integral of sine of x from uh, say two to three. And this will give you a definite integral result. So it's kind of a you know combination between actually programming and using a calculator or something like that. But um, as we work on more difficult problems, you know, um, if you need to want to get an answer to an integral quickly or something like that, you know, feel free to to use this. Of course, it won't be available on the um, final or the exams, but I'm also going not going to be giving you, there shouldn't be problems that are so difficult you can't do them without uh, uh, something like Wolfram. But there will be some problems that we do in, in class that are really difficult that, uh, or not necessarily difficult to, to work, but the integral itself might be difficult to actually solve. And so a tool like this is, is useful for that. So I wanted to point that out in case you haven't seen this before, um, but this is something that you could use right on the problem like this. You could break it up so that you could work through the steps of this integral. You could um, solve it using Wolfram. Um, what else did I wanna say? I, but that was, that was one, one good tip. I made a link to our class recordings. This this is going to go to a uh, YouTube playlist, and I will add the each day's recording into this playlist. Okay, so 
if you happen to miss, not feeling good, et cetera, uh, the, I will be planning to upload each day's recording into this playlist. Of course, uh, like I mentioned, you know, on the first day of class, this is this class is intended to be uh, highly interactive, and I want you to be here on time. We'll do it all synchronously, and if you want the you know full points for the class, you should plan to attend. But I know sometimes you know things happen; you can't do it for whatever reason. Let me know ahead of time or soon after you miss, and um, you know these videos will be available here too as as a review or to help you out. Okay, I don't think that I have anything else. Uh, take a look, keep working on homework one. We'll probably look at it a little bit more uh, next week on Tuesday um, before moving on to the second homework. And I will update the rest of the homeworks to make sure that the submission uh, information on Moodle uh, does describe the, the, correct, the correct day. If you have any questions or um, anything, feel free to stick around on this Zoom call, and I will be happy to answer your questions or anything like that. If not, feel free to take off, and I'll see you next week. Thank you. We'll see you. Okay. See ya. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <clears throat>